You're listening to a special interview segment for the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. Okay, folks, joining us on the phone this week, we've had him on before, and it's always nice to have him back again. This time he's added two prestigious things you can put on a resume. He is the general manager of SmackDown and recent Hall of Fame inductee for the WWE, the one and only Booker T. Booker T, welcome back to the show. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Glad to be back. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. Uh, for all of your Booker T information, go to YouTube.com slash Booker T R-O-W. You can follow him on Twitter at Booker T5X. Also, Facebook slash, Facebook.com slash Booker T Reality of Wrestling. Uh, and first off, you want to say a special congratulations on becoming a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, that's, you know, it's a really big honor for, for you know, for a wrestler to get in through the business and get to that prestigious honor. Uh, could you kind of take us through the emotions that you got when you first got the call about asking to be in uh, all the way leading up to your, uh, your hall of fame speech? Oh, uh, really? Um, man, the, um, the call was uh, unexpected. Uh, something that, you know, totally was, uh, not thinking about at that time. Uh, with me, it's always just about doing the work. Um, uh, the hall of fame was something uh, I thought was, you know, far, far away, man, many, many years down the road for me. Um, but getting the call was uh, was like, wow, uh, overwhelming, overjoyed at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, glad that um, the, the hard work had, had paid off, of course, you know, uh, 22 years in the business and uh, still relatively, uh, you know, in pretty good shape, you know, and, uh, you know, to get the call to go into the Hall of Fame was was um, a great call. Um, it was a bittersweet moment um, at the same time, but uh, I took my walk into immortality, and uh, I'm loving every bit of it. Absolutely. It's very cool to see uh, Stevie Ray up there with you as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was the best part. You know, uh, my brother and I, uh, people haven't, you know, the fans haven't seen us on stage together in since 99, perhaps, uh, maybe 2000, but it's been a long time. Just people actually um, got a chance to see Harlem Heat um, back on stage. Uh, people um, have always asked for a Harlem Heat reunion. Uh, when are we going to see a Harlem Heat reunion? So the fans got finally got a chance to, you know, somewhat see that Harlem Heat reunion. Two brothers, you know, started at the bottom of WCW to go all the way to the top of WCW. Then, you know, now to find a, you know, one brother in the Hall of Fame, and and I'm sure, you know, my brother is going to find his way in there as well. Um, Harlem Heat, I'm sure to be inducted. Um, sooner uh, or later. Absolutely. Uh, and you mentioned earlier, you know, you said uh, how, how you're still in, in pretty good shape. Uh, do you think we'll ever see you uh, compete in a WWE ring again? Like, even if it's a, a part-time feud, or, you you know, do you feel like you're you're done with that aspect of wrestling? You know, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to put wrestling behind me. Um, wrestling has been good to me. Um, it's been, you know, um, you know, my sole provider as far as taking care of my family uh, for 20 years, and um, I love the business. I love what, it's, what it stands for, you know. But um, on the other hand, you know, it's, it comes a time when you got to take a step aside and, you know, let the uh, let the guys, the young guys, take their place and, uh, you know, um, achieve their greatness, uh, you know, for Hall of Fame status to go out there and, you know, uh, go around the world, uh, you know, take all those bumps. You know, um, mm-hmm. you know those sleepless, sleepless nights. You know, I mean, it's time to get those guys a chance to do that. You know, <laughs> I feel like a war veteran that went through the war, been through the trenches, and um, you know, started out started out as a private, and now I'm a general, and now I can sit back um, in the Oval Office and uh, just watch <laughs> it on a little monitor. <laughs> Very cool. Um, in in the past, we've heard you speak, um, you know, extremely highly of the the late Mr. Paul Bosch, and uh, even the last time we spoke to you. Uh, you mentioned him as like a great inspiration for uh, what you're trying to do now with the reality of wrestling and bringing that uh, prominence of wrestling back to the Houston area. Um, is uh, is Mr. Bosch, you know, somebody that you would you would like to see get in the Hall of Fame with you, and or maybe even someone that you'd be lobbying for to join you in the Hall of Fame? Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, Paul Bosch may not be in the. Uh you know, Hall of Fame, but he, he's in the Hall of Fame. He, uh, he'll always be a Hall of Famer um, uh, to so, so many people. Um, so I don't think um, just that that title um, is what makes um, the person who he really is. You know, so uh, Paul um, is uh, an angel on my shoulder. Um, I talk about Paul um, all the time. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a constant reminder uh, for me to um, go out there and do well. Just talking about Paul about, about an hour ago, actually. And, um, He's the guy who keeps me, um, you know, 
focused as far as what you know my goal is. My goal is to you know bring wrestling back to the Houston area, um, bring wrestling um, back to you know um, the, you know the young guys that want to do it and um, want to perform and want to be that on that big stage one day and um, being a WWE ring, being on a WrestleMania one day, and if I can give them that platform, you know to. Um, to jump off of, to, you know, just to have that little springboard. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I can, if I can become a territory um, uh, for Texas again, you know, and take that show on the road and, uh, you know, give give the people that same thing Paul Bosch gave so many people, you know, that's what I want to do, you know. And, uh, and then, like I said, just get, lead these guys to the next step of their careers and hopefully it's the big time. Yeah, and you certainly seem to be, uh, you know, grooming some of your uh, some of your you know, future prospects, I guess, uh, for that next leap, because, you know, I've, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about the positive energy that's backstage. You know, everyone's getting along well. They just want to go out there and put on a great show. You know, um, we had John about this time last year to, to discuss the changing from PWA to reality of wrestling. Uh, we've even gotten to attend a few shows. Uh, how would you say that this first year has gone for the company and what's in store for, for this coming year and the years to come? The day has been uh, been going up, upward, um, and that's what's been good about it. Uh, you know, we started out show one; it was a rocky show. You know, I mean, the audio uh, was, you know, it was bad. The technical was uh, <laughs> bad. You know, a lot of the camera angles was bad. You know, but you got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to start at the bottom uh, to go any anywhere in this lifetime. And I realized that, you know, starting, you know, at the bottom of WCW and like I say, closing the company down, but. Thing is, with ROW, um, we felt like it was time for a change, uh, and the change was uh, something really, really good. Um, like I say, putting the show on the internet, letting people actually get a chance to see what we're doing. Um, like you say, um, letting these guys get a chance to be seen uh, worldwide, and then hopefully get discovered. That's how I got discovered by somebody seeing me and saying, "Hey, man, this guy's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, how can I get in touch with him?" Oh, Booker T. Okay, now, now guys, um, have a way to get into the business. I'm. Well, for so many years, uh, you know, guys wondered, how can I get into the business, you know? So with ROW, um, it's been a great, great springboard right now. We're at Show 30. Um, show 30 is um, was totally off the hook. I mean, my, my kids, um, they went out there, and they uh, totally rocked it. I was so proud of, you know, my guys going out there and uh, bringing the show up to another level. Um, the fans um, totally came out to where we, uh, our last show it was, a standing room. Uh, we ran out of chairs actually <laughs> for the fans, you know. So we we see it growing on a, on a monthly basis, and uh, uh, now uh, now we're going to be working with uh, Lucha USA, and uh, that's going to be good, you know. To uh, you know finally start you know work with some of the Mexican stars. Hopefully, you know we can get some of those guys, you know, to the next level. Uh, you know, change their you know mindset as far as the way they go out there and work. You know, get them into the you know my my wrestling facility over here, and I'm in Houston, and uh, you know get them to the next level as well. So. Right now, it's just about creating and uh, trying to do as much as possible can, uh, like I say, for the next generation. Very cool. Um, you know, we mentioned uh, grooming some of some of your current uh, wrestlers. Have any of the guys backstage in the WWE come to you and ask ask for advice? Like, do you feel like you've become sort of a mentor for any of those? Oh man, yeah, of course. You know, I talked to all of the young guys. Uh, like they Sheamus, uh, actually Fandango. He's one of my guys who. I, I really I want to see succeed, you know, and uh, uh, tell these guys exactly what they need to go out there and do from an entertainment perspective. Um, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of these guys, uh, the Zigglers, you know. Uh, uh, make sure I tell that guy to go out there and be a little bit more selfish. You know, uh, you're a little too unselfish, uh, and you go out there and make everybody else look good. So I think you should go out there and you know make yourself look a little bit better uh, mm -hmm. than, 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 than you do sometimes. You know, so it's just about, it's just a matter of. Uh, you know, being that mentor, being the guy that uh, that these um, guys know that they look at me and say, "Well, man, it's not about him anymore," and he and he's he's willing to um, you know help us you know um, get to that next level. It's it's, it's not about uh, you know how many cheers he can get, and for them to see that is it's really really cool. Um, they got a uh, certain respect for me um, as well um, when they can see that I'm willing to pass the torch uh, to to the to them and uh, let them run. And uh, be free and uh, take it as far as you can take it, you know. Because I've done it all. I, I've seen every every form and facet in this business. There's nothing else that that I really um, think that I can see that's going to surprise me. So you know, it's not about me anymore. Um, it's about the uh, the youth of the business. 
You got to keep your eye on Teddy Long, though. Yeah. He may surprise you. I'm, I see some fishiness going on with Mr. Long. <laughs> well, Teddy, Teddy Long, better, he, he better not have a heart attack. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, he better just make sure he's taking his, you know, Lipitol or whatever they call it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know make, make sure he's going to be around here for a minute. But uh, ain't worried about Teddy. Teddy uh, Teddy's been around a long time. Uh, he's a shrewd and crude. Uh, he knows the business. Uh, of course, I know I got to watch him. Um, you, know, you got to keep your, you know, your enemies close, um, but you got to keep your friends a little bit closer, and that's what I'm doing with Teddy Long. Don't mind your business. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, how 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 do you feel like you've adapted uh, to being a general manager? Because you know, you were before that you were on commentary. Uh, do you kind of do you miss commentary, or have you sort of just grown into the general manager position and uh, are feeling better you know, about that? Uh, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun on commentary, but I tell you, I've been on the, uh, at, the, at the commentary table. It's, it's a pressure cooker. I mean, you got to be ready every night. Um, it's like being in a boxing match every week, <laughs> you know. Um, and I, I give a lot of praise to uh, Cold and you know JBL and those guys for being able to go out there and do it on a weekly basis. Myself, I miss it, but um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, love, I love my spot as general manager as well. You know, I'm an authority figure. You know, I'm the guy. I'm, I'm, I'm the boss. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's good being the boss. Uh, I must say, uh, it's a role that um, I never expected uh, being in uh, ever. Uh, you know, but um, Teddy Long had um, eight years uh, as general manager, uh, two terms. Man, it's time for me to get my two terms. You know, and uh, my administration <laughs> is going to come in and change the whole, you know, the layout of the White House. You know, <laughs> do something different. But uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying just being a part. Of uh, WWE, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying still being a part of the business. Uh, 23 years in December, uh, I'm enjoying still having fun um, at, at what I do uh, more than anything. Life is short, you know. Um, you only live once. Um, enjoy it while you can, and that's what I'm doing right now. Very cool. Uh, what's What's the feeling that you get when you see like? the younger uh, audience come up and recognize you and say, oh, you know, I'm such a big fan without having, you know, extensive knowledge of your days of WCW or before that, you know, like, like what's the feeling knowing like you're still having an influence on, on the younger generation? Yeah, that's, that was always my goal to be able to transition, you know, um, from one stage to the next stage. Uh, you know, I still, I mean, I picked my um, son up from school and you know he's two and a half years old and that's a little kid in school and he goes booger t and he you know he, he knows my name you know he <laughs> watches me um, because his brother watches me on youtube why i don't know um but i'm still um you know having impacts um in kids lives you know i mean i still have such a young audience still know me um you know from you know from being a commentator or from being general manager or just from watching me on youtube and uh, still loving what I have um, brought to the game. You know, they heard like old folk tales about Booker T, and then now they got to go and watch it on YouTube just to see if it's true. You know, <laughs> so that kind of stuff. You know, uh, it uh, really makes me um, happy about uh, the way I've uh, you know took the next step uh, of of my career. Um, I haven't got stuck in one season. Uh, I've, I've still, um, you know, to this day, I'm I'm still evolving. You know, to the next level. Um, you know, the next level is to you know be totally behind the scenes, um, working with the guys. You know, and um, just producing, uh, directing. Uh, uh, from that standpoint, you know, and still being relevant, just from a different perspective. You know, and um, you know, um, I've had my time. It's been great, and uh, you know, but you know, it's not about me. It's like the Temptations. You know, Temptations. You know, had their first big hit in 1965. You know, and all of them are dead now, but the group is still going because it was never about one guy in the group. You know, it was always about the group. Still going. So, um, people are calling. Still selling out. Yeah, uh, people are calling this year's Hall of Fame class one of, if not the best ever. Uh, and so, I want to get your opinion on how does it feel to be inducted in the class with Bruno San Martino, Bob Backlund, Mick Foley, even Trish Stratus. Hey, don't forget Donald Trump. You know, yeah, I'll Donald uh, as well. <laughs> anyhow, you know, man, it, it feels great. Um, you know, for you know people to say that, uh, I thought it was a great class for me. Um, it was an honor, uh, a privilege, you know, to be um, inducted in the same class with Bruno San Martino, of course. You mm-hmm. know, uh, a living legend. You know, a guy who's uh, you know, done so much for the business. Um, 
he was bigger than life, you know, um, you know, in his day, you know, he was like a god, you know, and uh, people would look up to him so, so much, even still now today, you know, so, as well as Bob Back with uh, Rick Foley, um, all, all the guys that were, you know, went into the Hall of Fame this year were very, very accomplished, as well as Trish Stratus, uh, you know, one of the greatest divas of all time. Uh, you know, so the class was, uh, it was a great class for me to be a part of. Um, I wouldn't have missed it for the world, um, it being in New York City and then Madison Square Garden. Uh, that that right there was a treat for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Watching, you know, Muhammad Ali, you know, fight Madison Square Garden when I was a kid. Never in a million years thinking I would be there, but being on the biggest stage, being the focal point, you know, for that few minutes that I was on stage. Uh, it was great. It was great. It was a great night. Uh, and it was something, uh, like I said, I wish I could do uh, every year. Yeah. How nervous were you uh, before going out to give your speech? I mean, you know, I was pretty nervous, uh, you know, but I didn't, for some reason I didn't fumble or anything, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, it was real uh, for me. Uh, that was the first time uh, the fans I ever got a chance to see Booker T. Huffman uh, ever on stage. Uh, that was the first time people ever got a chance to see the real me uh, outside of, you know, my act. Um, I was, every every time someone seen me on television, it's always been an act. It's never been a real person. Mm. Uh, so that was the first time uh, the fans ever got a chance to see me and feel me uh, from a different perspective, uh, from a realistic perspective, and I think they um, now look at me uh, uh, in a whole different way uh, as well, just from you know that one night and that one speech. Very cool. And you are uh, getting ready to go over to the uh, to the UK. Uh, are you getting excited about about that trip? No, no, I don't, I don't get excited about that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's gonna be another trip, you know. I mean, you don't be away from my kids, you know. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I mean, it's the, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get to work, Dad. Uh, I'm gonna go do the work uh, like I always do. Uh, I'm gonna, go, uh, I'm gonna enjoy it, uh, you know. Uh, you know, so that that's what I do. Uh, so it's it's always been that way for me. Um, it's never been um, the adventure. It's always been the job. It's mm-hmm. always been going, taking care of the business. That's why I'm still here. That's why I'm still going strong. You know, I never. Uh, you know, got caught up at the party, you know, um, you know, where they had to take me out and carry me out and that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? It's never been that way for me. It's always been, you know, take care of the business, you know, and then the business will take care of you. And like I say, 23 years later, I'm still here. I'm still going strong. That's so cool to have a, to have a career last that long and, and still be able to, you know, play with your kids and not have to worry about, you know, lingering injuries or, or anything like that. It's just, it's, it's really good to see, you know, you'd be one of those success stories in, in, in wrestling. Um, and for all the information, like I said, go to youtube.com slash Booker T R O W. Go to Twitter at Booker T five X. You can also find it facebook.com slash Booker T reality wrestling. And one I forgot earlier, uh, you can go to feed that's P H E E D.com slash Booker T and, uh, check out all the information on there. Booker, Congratulations on becoming a Hall of Famer. We certainly do appreciate you coming on the show. And, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, like I say, uh, all my fans out there, I always, like I always say, it's not cliche. Uh, without those guys, you know, Booker T wouldn't be here doing what he's doing. I just appreciate all the support, you know, over the years, uh, all the signs, you know, uh, you know, all of the, you know, the, the just pushing for Booker T to be in a, a position. And uh, man, still to this, this this day, you know, I still get you know nothing but uh, a lot of a lot of guys pushing me towards that light at the end of the tunnel. And I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate all you guys. Very cool. Thank you very much. We super appreciate your time. All right, thank you guys. And we we'll hope to see you at the uh, the next ROW show. So, oh, uh, definitely, I'll be there, bro. All right, that sounds good. And uh, all right, man. and we'll talk to you later. All right, you guys are good, man. Later. Have one.